Detroit Sox. Yes, your Chicago Blackhawks defeat the Detroit Red Wings in overtime 4-3 in the Madhouse on Madison. Opening night for the 2022-2023 Chicago Blackhawks. Yes, this was a classic between your two arch rivals, the Blackhawks and Red Wings. A comeback of the to remember for this team by your Chicago Blackhawks. And it had a lot a revenge in this game as well. The Wings with three former Hawks on their lineup tonight, and it was a revenged game, clearly. And the Hawks with one former Detroit Red Wing on their lineup, and it was a revenge game for himself. This was an impressive way to win it. It was a good effort by your Blackhawks in tonight's game, and it was a fun game to watch. First 10 minutes of play by your Blackhawks was outstanding. In the rest of that first period of play, it was all Detroit. But the Hawks were able to prevail. Peter Mrazek started, and Alex Daylock got the victory. Mrazek came out of the game early with it. some injury, and Stalock stood strong and got the Hawks to two points in this action. This was a impressive victory for your Chicago Blackhawks. This team we know isn't built the best, but they're going to be a hard-nosed fighting team to the end. That's how I've been watching each and every game so far out of the four games this season the Hawks have played. They've been in each and every game battling hard to keep the game's close. Maybe not the first game, but otherwise, it was still a close enough game against the, the defending champions in Colorado. But this game was an impressive victory. Total shots on net in each period, it was 6-3 to three in favor for the Detroit Red Wings in the first period, 12-11 to 11 in favor for Detroit in the second period, and then in the third period, the Hawks went off. It was 9-13 to 13 in favor for your Blackhawks, having stellar defense and stellar goaltending by um, Stalock. And in overtime, shots were 1-2, to two, and the second one being the GWG and OT. This was a great game. There was a lot of penalties, a lot of aggressive play. It was reminding me of old Blackhawk Detroit Central Division rivalry before Detroit left for the Eastern Conference. That's how this game felt. It looked good. A lot of penalties, a lot of aggressive play, playing hard, playing to the final minute of play. Penalties, it was 1 for 5 on the power play for Detroit, 0 for 3 for the Hawks on the power play. But we do get another shorthanded goal tonight. So that's another A plus in my opinion. They were able to stop four out of five power plays. I think that's actually pretty successful for the Hawks in my opinion. Hits 13 to 27 in favor for your Chicago Blackhawks. Heavy hitting game on the favor for the Hawks. They were aggressive, playing hard, and getting that work ethic going. Luke Richardson clearly has that where this team is built for working hard to try to upset. And that's how it's working out for the Hawks. So, shall we get to the goals of the game in this one? In the first period, as I mentioned, it was Detroit. They battled and got the goals. The Hawks in the first 10 minutes of play were outplaying Detroit until at 9.26 in the first period, by former Blackhawk and now Detroit Red Wing, Pew Suter with his first of the season, assisted by Hag and Lindstrom to make it 1-0 Detroit. This was a deflection past Mrazek. It kind of was off a face-off win, 
Mrazik makes the save, got redirected onto the stick of Suter, and Suter beats Mrazik. It's 1-0 Detroit. After that, the Hawks get called for a penalty, and they give up a power play goal here. At 10, 33 in the first period, Dylan Larkin scores his second of the season on a power play, assisted by former Blackhawk Dominic Kubalik and Heronic to make it 2 nothing Detroit. This was just a strong passing play. Hawks got, got caught put, puck watching, basically, and uh, Kubalik fed Larkin, and Larkin blasts one past Mrazek. So, the Wings continue to press and keep the Hawks in the defensive zone. Going into the second period, Hawks are down by two. But, in the second period, the Hawks are battling hard, getting opportunities to go. And well, at 541 in the second period, for his first as a Chicago Blackhawk, scored by number 89, Andreas, after the CU, on the penalty shot, to get the Hawks on the board in the Madhouse opening night. This was a nice one. After the CU to draw the penalty shot, game went in on a rush. With speed, gets tripped, and the Hawks get a penalty shot. After the CU goes in for his fifth career penalty shot attempt, and he goes up, goes a little bit wide, and freezes Nedeljkovic, and gets the Hawks on the board, and... AA gets the Hawks their first goal in the UC this season. It's a nice one. A penalty shot goal to start off the season in the United Center. That's nice to see. So it's 2-1 Detroit. But about five minutes later, this happened. A deflection happened at 11-18 in the second period. Scored by former Blackhawk Dominic Kubalik, his second of the season, assisted by former Blackhawk Oli Mata to make it a 3-1 game. Kubalik gets up where there's a little bit of a presence in the slot, and he gets a stick down. Mata shoots it, goes off the, the stick of Kubalik, and past Mrazek, it's... A 3-1 game. Kind of hurts to see Kubi gone, in my opinion. But he's now with Detroit, and Detroit sucks. So, after that, the Hawks started to press hard and try to get back in it. Don't get a goal. Mrazek gets injured in the final seconds of play. We go to the third period, where Alex Stalock enters the net. People wondered what happened. Uh, Mrazek looked like he tweaked something on his hip side. Uh, they showed a replay of the second period when he appeared to got injured, but wasn't quite sure. So, Staylock's in net for the Hawks now. So, we go to the third period. And in the third period, the Hawks come pressing at 346 in the... Third period, scored by number 23, Philip Kureshev, his first of the season, assisted by number 24, Sam Lafferty, and number 8, Jack Johnson. This goal by Kureshev was a beauty. He gets the puck and beats Nadelkovic. And we are within one. It was a great opportunity to get the Hawks early goal in the third period, down by two. You get on the board, and you're within one now. Kurashev gets the Hawks momentum, and we continue to press hard and continue to work hard. Because at the 10-minute mark, this happens at 10.06 in the third period. Scored by number five, Connor Murphy. Short-handed off a face-off win from Sam 
Lafferty to tie the game three to three in the third. Yes, we are tied tree to tree by a shorthanded slap shot of a goal from Connor Murphy off a of shorty. He hits our third shorty of the year. Our last season, we only had two. Last game, we had two from Sam Lafferty. And Murphy now gets the Hawks their third shorty. And it's a nice one. Hawks are tied. It's tree tree in the turd. Shout out Pat Foley. So, after that, the Hawks had a couple more penalties. They killed them. Were able to press. Work hard. We go to overtime. And in overtime, this happens. At 2.16 in the overtime, Max Domi with his second of the season, stealing the puck in the neutral zone, going on a breakaway, and breeding Nadelkovic to give the Hawks the 4-3 victory in the United Center. And we win this thing. Max Domi with a great steal, working hard, getting the Hawks this victory. Number 13, Max Domi, in the overtime, looked good. He had a couple opportunities earlier to get the Hawks the win. It didn't work out, but he got the steal in the neutral zone, and we got the victory from it. So, down in the comments down below, I want to hear what your thoughts were on tonight's action. And thank you for watching the broadcast. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And most of all, I know we're in for a long season. We could celebrate hard like this one. But here's the main chant. Detroit Sox! Detroit Sox! And let's go Hawks!